Today I'm in Dayton, Ohio at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. And I'm joined by Jeff DeFord. Jeff, thanks so much for talking about uh, us today. It's a pleasure to be here today. We are in front of the F-117. Tell us about this plane. This is the F-117 Nighthawk, but it's known to the world as the stealth fighter. It could perform in a way that no other aircraft could by being virtually invisible on radar screens. How did it do that? Well, it's kind of a myth that it was completely invisible. What it did is it directed energy in different directions. So you can think of it kind of like a flashlight. If you shine a flashlight into a mirror, the light comes right back on you. But if you angle that mirror in such a way that the light goes in a different direction, then you're essentially sitting in the dark. That's what the F-117 did. And in fact, if you look at the structure of the airplane, it has a bunch of flat facets operating kind of like a mirror would if a light was shined on it. Pretty much everything on this airplane is designed to keep it from being detected by radar, right? That's right. Uh, the designers, the people who built the aircraft, and the folks who maintained it had to pay attention to every single last detail. For instance, radar energy could get into the cockpit through the cockpit glass. It was made out of a special material. Then it also had a special coating over the entire aircraft called RAM, or radar absorbent material. And lastly, they had to be very careful about any seam, any little blemish in the uh, surface, they would have to repair that or the airplane would then be able to be seen on radar. Wow, and it looks like it's got little jagged edges all over the place. Why, why the jagged edges? It does, it, you see that everywhere, not only on main structures in the aircraft, but along panel lines and things like that. And again, it goes back to the same thing trying to control the radar emissions bouncing off the aircraft so that an enemy radar couldn't see it. Wow, can we go take a look around? Yeah, let's go. Awesome. We're underneath the F-117 by the bomb bay doors. What are we looking at here? Well, what we're looking at is one of two bomb bays in the F-117, and this is what the F-117 is made to deliver. And the F-117, it's, it's called a fighter, but it really isn't. It's really an attack aircraft or a bomber aircraft. How do you make a door that doesn't reflect radar? You know, that's a great question. Not possible. So just for a moment, while these bomb bay doors were open and they were releasing the weapons, the airplane lit up radar screens. So it would release it very, very quickly and the doors would shut very quickly. This plane kind of paved the way for how weapons are delivered on future aircraft, right? That's right. So basically a stealth aircraft has to carry its weapons internally to be stealthy. So the F-117 was the first aircraft to do this but follow-on aircraft like the Air Force's most modern fighters, the F-22, F-35, carry their weapons internally when they're in stealth mode. This is so cool under here. We've moved to the back and I've always wondered, where's the exhaust? Well, uh, the F-117 has a very special exhaust. So radar is, is one way that an enemy could see our aircraft, but infrared is another way that an enemy could detect our airplanes and jet engines are terrible about uh, emitting heat. So F-117 has a very special exhaust. It has two long slits along the back end and that very hot jet exhaust is diffused as it comes out in the back end of the aircraft. Wow. Well, thank you so much for showing us around yeah, today. And my pleasure. As you just learned, the shape of the F-117 was designed to minimize detection on radar. This includes the sharp angles, a canted or slanted tail, and even absorbent paint. But when the shape of the plane changes because the bomb bay doors are open, it changes what shows up on radar. The F-117 has an unusual shape. Can you think of any other aircraft that have a strange shape? If you can, let us know in the comments section. And if you like this video, be sure to follow STEM in 30 on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to the National Air and Space Museum's YouTube channel.